Today we're going to be learning how to write sequences. Last class we learned how to use them. And remember, sequences are just lists of numbers in a particular order, kind of like a pattern. But when we talk about sequences, we can also give them basically an equation that creates the sequence. However, we're not going to use x's and y's. We're going to be using a new way to write about sequences with this uh, notation. This is pronounced A sub N because N is the subscript of the letter A. Now N refers to the position that it is in the sequence. You can think of that as X. And each term or the output like Y is that A sub N. So it's the number or the term that is in a certain position. A sub N and N. Now there are a bunch of different ways we can write sequences. The way that we're going to write them the most is in this explicit format, which is the first row of the column. If we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence, um, we are still going to be using the common difference. Remember, the D right there stood for the common difference. But what we are going to be adding to it is not the first term in the sequence. We're going to add to it what's called the zeroth term in the sequence, which is a weird way to say that. But we're going to be taking the common difference and multiplying it by that position n and adding the zeroth term, essentially adding our initial value, the zero term. For a geometric sequence, remember those are the ones that multiplied. We're still going to be using the common ratio r, but in, just like in an arithmetic sequence, we have the zeroth term in a sequence that is going to be multiplied in the very front. This time also our n, or our position, is up here floating as an exponent. So that's, we would plug things in, but remember n is an exponent. It's little and it's hanging off the shoulder of the r. We are, however, also going to be using sequences equations when they're written in what's called a recursive pattern. A recursive pattern is really easy to use because all a recursive pattern does is it says to create a new term in the sequence, we're going to take the term before, that's what that funky notation means, a sub n minus one, really means the term before, and we're going to add that number. Add the common difference. Mm -hmm. And for a geometric sequence written in a recursive pattern, all we're going to do is take, again, the term before, and we are going to multiply it by that number r. Two things much next to each other are multiplied. So the recursive patterns are really easy because they tell us, again, take the term before and add whatever number your common difference is or take the term before and multiply whatever your common ratio is. We're going to be using both the recursive and the explicit version of these arithmetic and geometric sequences to write and still use the equations of sequences. First things first, let's make sure we understand the recursive patterns and how to continue to create sequences, just like we did last time. Number one says a sequence can be generated by using a sub n equal to 5 times a sub n minus 1, where a sub 1 is 8 and n is a whole number greater than 1. The main question here is, what are the first four terms in the sequence? Well, right away I can tell you what the first term in the sequence is. a sub 1 says in the first position, a sub 1, we have the number 8. And then this pattern right here, a sub n equal to 5 times a sub n minus 1, says take the 1 before it and multiply by 5. Well, I can do that. 8 times 5 is 40. Then if I do that again, 40 times 5, that's the 1 before, that's 200. Take the 1 before, which is 200, and multiply it by 5. That's going to be 1,000. So my sequence is 8, 40, 200, 1,000, and so on and so forth, ending with that ellipses again. Those are the first four terms in this sequence that says to multiply 
by 5 for every term before. Easy. I want you guys to try number two. It says, a sequence can be generated by using a sub n equal to 1 half a sub n minus 1, where a sub 1 is 80 and n is a whole number greater than 1. What are the first four terms in this sequence? That's the main question here. What are the first four terms in the sequence? First things first, what is the first term in the sequence? Yeah, hopefully you notice that a sub 1 equals 80 means that the first term in the sequence is 80. And then, since we have this formula, what are we going to be doing to find the next number in the sequence? Yeah, it says to multiply by a half, which really means divide by 2. Multiply by a half is divide by 2. So tell me what the next four numbers in the sequence are. Yeah, if you continue to divide by 2 or multiply by a half each time, you'll see that the pattern or the sequence is 80, 40, 20, 10, and on and on. Great. Number three says a sequence can be generated by using the uh, formula a sub n equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 3 where a sub 1 is negative 3 and n is a whole number greater than 1. What are the first four terms in the sequence? Again, that's the question here. We know that the first term in the sequence is negative 3 because right here, a sub 1 tells me the first term in the sequence is negative 3. But then, since I see I have this formula right here, I literally see a plus 1 after the a sub n minus 1, which means take the 1 before it and add 3. Okay, let's do that. Here's the first term, and if I add 3 to it, I get the second term. Take the second term, add 3, I get the third term. Take the third term, add 3, I get the fourth term. So our sequence is negative 3, 0, 3, 6, continued on. Number 4 is completely yours. What are the first four terms in this sequence? Cool. Here's what I have. We know that the first term in this sequence, since a sub 1 equal 2, is 2. And then my formula says take the 1 before it and subtract 1. So, okay, that's what I did. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. The pattern would continue if I was asked for 5 or 6 terms in the sequence, but we can just keep going since we know how the sequence works. If we look at numbers 5, 6, and 7, these questions are a little bit different because we're actually going to be writing an explicit equation. The first couple have some training wheels for you to help you understand how to think through this process. But then we'll be able to do it without the training wheels of this table here. Number 5 says, in a sequence of numbers, a sub 1 is 10, a sub 2 is 20, a sub 3 is 40, a sub 4 is 80, and a sub 5 is 160. Fill in the table with the terms of the sequence, then write an explicit equation to find the nth term in the sequence. All right, let's first just start off with what we know. We know that a sub 1, so in the first position, is 10, in second position, 20, then 40, then 80, then 160. That's what we know based on all of the information in the table. Before we keep going, can you guys tell me, is this an arithmetic or a geometric sequence? Yeah, this is a geometric sequence because these numbers are growing by multiplying instead of adding. What are we multiplying each time? What is that common ratio? Yeah, we're multiplying by 2 each time. So here's what I know. I know that to write an explicit equation for a geometric uh, sequence, I need to fill in the formula a sub n equal to a sub 0 times r to the n power. All I have to fill in, though, is the a sub 0 and the r. 
Okay, so let's fill in the rest of this table so we know what we're dealing with. If we're multiplying by 2 as the sequence keeps going, the 6th term would be 320, the 7th would be 640, and the 8th term would be 1280. But what is that 0 term? 5 is right. Because we'd have to multiply 5 times 2 to get 10, that means we know that our a sub 0 is 5. Great, so here, knowing that information, all I need is the a sub 0 and the r. These two things are going to give me enough information to write my equation. We know that a sub n is going to be equal to the, the zeroth term, 5, times the common ratio of 2 raised to the n power. That's the pattern that we would use to create any nth term in the sequence. Let's check out number 6. It says in a sequence of numbers this time with two, uh, a sub 3 is 2, a sub 4 is 6, a sub 5 is 10, a sub 6 is 14, and a sub 7 is 18. Fill in the tables with the terms of the sequence. Then write an explicit equation to find the nth term in the sequence. So let's fill in our table with what we know. We know that a sub 3, the third term in the sequence, is 2, 6, 10, 14, and 18. Is this an arithmetic or a geometric sequence? Yeah, this is an arithmetic sequence, which means that since we are adding each time, it's going to have a common difference. What is that common difference? Yeah, we're adding 4 each time this, we go to the next term in the sequence. So if we were filling out the rest of the table, 18 plus 4 is 22. But if I need to work backwards, because remember, I need that 0th position, I can just subtract 4 to create a full list of my numbers in my sequence. For an arithmetic equation, or sequence, sorry, we're going to be filling in the equation a sub n equals to d times n plus a sub 0. But remember, we only need the d for the common difference and the a sub 0 for the 0th term. And like, we already found those things. So all we have to do is plug them in. We know that the equation that represents the sequence would be a sub n equal to 4n plus negative 10 or minus 10. That's the equation that would give me any term or the nth term in this sequence. You guys are going to try number 7 all on your own. I will give you a couple hints. I'll give it to you now that this is going to be an arithmetic sequence, which means the formula that you're going to be filling in is a sub n equal to dn plus a sub 0. Your job is to figure out what the common difference and the zeroth term is for the sequence that you have on your page. Pause the video now and I want you to try that. So here's what we know from this sequence. We know that the first term is 25 and all the rest of the terms look like that. I would notice on this particular question that it looks like we're subtracting 10 each time we move from one, from one term to the next. That means that the common difference is negative 10. But before I can write my equation, I need a zero term. I need to know what would go here if the equation had a zero term. Well, that would have to be 35. So that if I subtracted 10 from 35, I'd end up at 25. So my equation, in ex my explicit equation for this sequence would be a sub n equal to negative 10n plus 35. That is the equation for the sequence that would generate all of these numbers in the sequence. Writing sequences into different forms of an equation is hard because there are multiple ways you could write it depending on if you want it to be explicit, like numbers 5, 6, and 7, or recursive, 
like numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Both of them are very helpful, but we're going to focus on using recursive sequences and writing explicit sequences in class. So I would double check and make sure that you have all of this information down for yourself when you come to class so that you know how to write these equations. See y'all in class.